The internet is on fire, because yesterday you had yourselves, the LA Kings, and the Arizona Coyotes play off in Australia. Yes, that is right. The preseason has begun early for some of these southwestern USA teams. And having the games played in the southern hemisphere, this is awesome. You're growing the game. You saw the fans over there. The Aussies, they were chanting, they were cheering, they were loud. It was great. But in this game yesterday, you saw yourselves a highlight real goal by one third overall Logan Cooley, who comes in down the wing and just dipsy doodles around the defense. He does a little spinorama to get himself some space, cuts back into the middle, and fires it against the goal, scoring what was one of the most beautiful goals we have seen in the year 2023, period. Logan Cooley is a monster, and these are the types of things that he was doing in the NCAA last year for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This also was culminated with him scoring the only shootout goal in the Coyotes and Kings game. Very nice little stutter step where he cuts over to the outside and then buries it. But with this in mind, Talking about Logan Cooley and the impact that he can make with the Arizona Coyotes, we've already made a few videos saying, hey, this guy could be the absolute challenger for Connor Bedard's Calder Trophy in 23-24. Adam Fantilli might have something to say about it, who really knows, but one thing's for sure. Logan Cooley was so good in the NCAA, he is so skilled, tricky, and nifty with the puck on his stick that when it comes to an Arizona Coyotes team that is just salivating for talent, if you have Cooley and Keller playing together, there's no telling how high the tides can roar. And for Logan Cooley yesterday, we got a first-hand showcase as to the skills being put on display. However, because this was the case, you had all the Canadians fans going out there and talking about Logan Cooley scoring this brilliant goal and scoring in the shootout and just being so impressive right away. And you could sense a sort of unease taking over Montreal Canadiens fans' Twitter accounts because all of a sudden, the narrative wasn't, oh, Logan Cooley is so good. The narrative was instead, oh, Logan Cooley is so good. Uri Slavkovsky better be better. Because, of course, when everybody talks about Logan Cooley being amazing, you always have to talk about the guys that went before him. Fortunately for Devils fans, Simon Nemec doesn't really seem to be involved in any of these discussions. But, when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, everybody is talking about Uri Slavkovsky, the guy that went first overall over Nemec and Cooley in 2022's NHL draft. And when you talk about what Slavkovsky has been doing, the Canadians had themselves a game earlier today, the, what was it, the scrimmage inter-squad game between Team White and Team Red. Slavkovsky had a few plays. Slavkovsky had a shootout goal, in fact. This is from literally three hours ago. But when you talk about all of the clips going around of Slavkovsky, you have the practice footage, you have the in-game inter-squad footage, you've got a lot of tape that Canadians fans are looking at and saying, okay, I mean, he looks okay, but look at Logan Cooley, man. In fact, you had a bunch of clips posted from earlier today. This is sort of the narrative that I feel that is formed around Slavkovsky when you have journalists like Mark Dumont going out there and saying this. Here's Slavkovsky who finds a streaking Alex Newhook, creating space and generating a good chance. Slavkovsky is looking a lot more aware of his situation today. Before any of the gift police get involved, we're well aware that this play by Slavkovsky is not a game-breaking one. And that's sort of the thing that I wanted to bring up. At the end of all of these Slavkovsky quotes, you're seeing people in the replies and you're seeing even the posters themselves saying, yeah, like we're aware that Slavkovsky is just making a simple outlet pass. It's not the biggest game-breaking play out there, but this is still a good play. In fact, the goal that he scored was one where he was set up by Josh Anderson. Pretty nice feed out in front. He's there on the back door. He scores. He kind of skates away after it. And the shootout goal, I'll admit, was a pretty nice goal too. Backhand, forehand, backhand, quick strides left and right. So good on him for opening up the goaltender and getting that side. But we have this narrative that is built up when it comes to talking about Yuri Slavkovsky that immediately, almost instinctively, links him to Logan Cooley. 
And it gets even worse when you see some tweets made like this that went viral the other day. Here's Habs Draft Nut on Twitter talking about Slavkovsky after the scrimmage from yesterday. This is coming from a big Slavkovsky fan in his draft year and an optimistic person. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Slavkovsky looks heavy, stiff, lost, tired, disengaged, and tentative. He's often upright with one hand on a stick and skating out of position. This is not the player the Habs drafted. The Habs need to oversee his entire off-ice and off-season training program. Something is wrong here. Slavkovsky was a big bowling ball of energy, skill, and vision who imposed himself on games. Now it looks like even pivots are a struggle, and he is steps behind. That's wild. Now, Trege Wilson goes out there and plays Devil's Advocate. I'm not sure which game you watched, but if it's today's game, so yesterday's game, you probably watched the game with your eyes closed because Slavkovsky was one of the better players today. The reply says that no, he was not one of the best players on the ice today, not remotely close. He was better than yesterday, though, and I hope he can pull it together. And so, for Slavkovsky, you're seeing so much more discourse around this guy that's a lot more meticulous in the way that he plays. Oh yeah, he's hunched over, he's looking a little slow, he's a bit heavy, like he's a 238-pound guy. That's a big guy. And I'm starting to see more and more people calling out that weight, saying, yeah, it looks like he's a big guy out there on the ice. Like, not in terms of his frame, but just in how he moves. The pace that used to be there hasn't shown itself off too much in this short scrimmage sample we've had so far. And of course, I'm not going to panic like the sky is falling down after a few scrimmage inner squad games before the preseason even begins. But you could understand why there's this sort of panic, I feel, based off of how Slavkovsky has shown off compared to the guys that are taken after him. If Logan Cooley comes into the NHL and scores 70 points in his first year, I don't think that will be the most surprising thing in the world. However, if Slavkovsky had a 70-point year, I feel like that would be surprising. Like, I don't know, we all kind of recognize that Slavkovsky is the bigger dude. When it comes to the playoffs, he has a more sturdy frame, and if he becomes what we hoped that he would become, there's definitely a lot of value there. Maybe even more so than a skilled, small-ish forward like Logan Cooley. But for now, in the race of 2022 draftees who have shown off well since the draft, I mean, I think it's clear to see who's number one in the power ranking so far. And that's not to say that Slavkovsky cannot go out there this upcoming season and prove everybody wrong, I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing, man. Like, everybody's talking about Cooley, people are talking about Slavkovsky in a worse way, and Canadians fans I'm seeing all over Twitter are panicking, asking whether or not this is going to affect the season and how Cooley might unanimously be seen as a more valuable player right after the draft than Slavkovsky. So, I don't know, is it early to be making these comparisons? For sure. Like, it's only been a year since they've been drafted, but there's a reason we started out one year later this season with Cooley over Slavkovsky. That guy is just a gamer, and his goal yesterday against the Kings cemented that in all of our heads. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Logan Cooley's brilliance being put on display in Australia? And how do you feel about Yuri Slavkovsky's debatably subpar scrimmage profile so far throughout training camp. Do these things directly go against each other, and does one influence the other? Are you seeing more of the panic that I've been seeing as well? I didn't want to pull up any examples because a lot of them happen to be quite vulgar, but uh, yeah, there are a bunch of tweets, there are a bunch of conversations on the R Hockey sub going over these guys. Oh, Slavkovsky did this. He's making a pass that AHLers can make. Why are we praising Slavkovsky for doing plays that regular freaking hockey players do every time? Versus Cooley, where it's like, yeah, okay, that guy's good. He's better than Slavkovsky already. It's kind of crazy to discourse that's going on here, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99. And... Bye.